In this video, we will hear from economist, American lawyer, investment banker, speaker, and best-selling author, Jim Rickards. He shares his analysis and well-studied perspective on the price of gold and its future value in the coming years. Mike Maloney is a long-recognized authority in finance and economics. He is the host of the smash hit series, Hidden Secrets of Money, and author of the best-selling book, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. There are bull markets and bear markets in basically any tradable instrument or commodity, or uh, I consider gold to be a form of money. But the first great bull market was um, 1971 to 1980. Uh, it lasted nine years and gold went up 2,200%. The second great bull market was from uh, 1999 to 2011. Gold went up at just a little under 700%. Now, I had a very interesting conversation with uh, Jim Rogers. Um, you know, Jim is one of the great commodity traders, uh, money managers of all times. And um, by this is around 2014. But so I said, Jim, you know, what, what do you think of gold? What are you doing? He goes, Well, I own it, of course. And he said, I'm not selling, but I'm not buying right here. And he said something that just hit me right between the eyes and it stayed with me. And of course, he's right. He said, Gold's going to the moon. But nothing goes to the moon without a 50% correction along the way. Now it's going up and the sky's the limit. My point was that we had the retracement between 2011 and 2015. That's done. Now it's just onward and upward. Well, we're not overheated at all. I've got gold at, I would put it at $15,000 an ounce before 2025. But as I point out, if you're going to $15,000 an ounce, you got to get to $3,000, $5,000, $7,000 $7, first. So there's plenty of room to run plenty of room for profits. I want to be clear, there's a lot of analysis behind it. I don't just pull a big number out of the air and, you know, for publicity because I could care less. And there are a couple ways to think about it. Just take the average of the two prior bull markets I mentioned. So 71 to 80, nine years, 2,200%, 99 to 2011, a 12-year bull market, um, about 700%. Just take the average. You don't have to go to the higher of the two or extrapolate. Just take the average of those two bull markets. You would say, okay, well, though the next bull market is going to be a little over 10 years. It's, it's going to well, 1,500%. So uh, so using that as your base, just take the average of the two. You say, all right, 10 years from 2015, that puts you out to 2025, puts you at $15,000 an ounce off a 1050 base. So that's just that's just history. My numbers, I think, are conservative. They could be much higher. Because the national currencies are not money. Currency cannot store value. Money does store value. I've got a silver Pegasus coin on my desk that was minted in roughly 500 BC. And if you melt it down, it still has purchasing power. Precious metals are the only thing that have proven themselves over the centuries to be money, a store of value. A store of value is the most important thing. So if somebody thinks that the, their currency, their national fiat currency, the US dollar, the euro, the yen, the pound, whatever, if they think it's money and they tell you, no, 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 my, our currency is money, then ask them, does money need to be a store of value? Is that one of its functions? And they will say yes. Then ask them, is there inflation? <laughs> if they say yes, then ask them, aren't those two things mutually exclusive? <laughs> if, it's a, if it's storing value, how come prices are going up and, and it's buying less the next day, the next year? You know, the world's central banks have been net buyers of precious metals for, of, of gold for quite a while now. And last year was a record that goes back to what 1968, I believe, was the last right. time. All, and, all time, actually, they re, they adjusted it. Time. They came back. The World Gold Council ca came back and said it was actually the highest bought ever on record. Doesn't that say to you that the central yes. banks that are doing the purchasing know that something <laughs> is up and they're getting That's ready? That's what for I've something been saying. Big. Yeah, something big is coming. I'm getting ready for it. But I believe this is going to be the biggest gold rush in history. The amount of currency that has been created, the amount of true wealth that exists, and then all of that suddenly trying to seek a safe haven uh, during periods of turbulence, which we are going into right now. And gold and silver have been suppressed. If the central banks are desperate to, to hoard gold or whatever for, for whatever they see coming, um, yeah. And, and you, you bring up that gold is, you know, right now we can argue should be much higher than what it is. And you, you bring up, you know, price suppression. Can we make a link there? I mean, don't central banks want to keep gold prices lower if they're buying? Yes, they do want to keep prices lower. It seems like there is something very big going on beneath the surface here. 
Any wise, experienced investor will tell you preparation is key. If you are interested in protecting and preserving your wealth with physical precious metals such as gold and silver, whether in the form of private investments or a gold IRA, see the links in the video description to see the best gold IRA and precious metal investment companies that we have personally researched and vetted. On the subject of strategy, I will leave you with one of my favorite and often used quotes from the Hall of Fame and professional hockey player Wayne Gretzky. I skate to where the puck is going to be, not to where it was. Thanks for watching.